Hello there guys, Vonnie here, back with another video, I hope you're having a great day and today in this video I'm going to be giving you 25 tips and tricks of things you may or may not have known about Super Animal Royale. Now big shout out to the people on screen right now, big shout out to them for helping me get all these tips and tricks, if it wasn't for them I wouldn't have as many and yeah. I'm going to keep this intro short, but if you do enjoy this video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe as it shows me you enjoy my content and it motivates me to make more. So yeah, but without further ado, let's get straight on today's video. Now starting off with tip number one, we're going to be talking about throwables. Now throwables consist of grenades, gas grenades and bananas and certain objects you can throw them over and some objects you can't. Now it's always best to keep in mind which objects you can and can't as it always allows you to have that extra layer of perception so you can probably get the jump on an enemy if you're throwing a grenade over a wall that you know they can't see you behind or having that extra layer of security to be aware that potentially an enemy can can throw a grenade or a skunk grenade or a banana over a wall to potentially disrupt or kill you. Now moving on to tip number two and this one is going to be all about the gas since me and many others forget the gas actually hurts. Now on the screen you'll be seeing me taking different forms of gas damage from early to mid to late game. Now the change of damage is gradual, gradual but again it does stack up at the end game and you should really keep this in mind just in case you ever think of exploring the gas. Tip number three, emus, our best friends. Now, some people like to actually don't know this, but emus can be healed both using campfires and consumables, so mushrooms, coconuts, whatever. So keep this in mind, if you ever want to do an emu strat and you want to heal your best friend, you can always make him peck some mushrooms and coconuts to heal him during battle. Tip number four. Now, many people also don't know this one, but the Banana Forker upgrade actually allows you to gain more HP when you eat consumables, so mushrooms, coconuts, whatever. Now, keep this in mind, if you ever want to heal yourself during a runaway from a battle, always make sure to equip yourself with Banana Forkers so that you get that extra health boost when eating mushrooms or coconuts. Now on to tip number five. Now, this isn't really a feature in the game. I feel like it's more like a bug and I don't know how long this will be in the game for. But for a few times now, I was able to get myself to have a weird speed boost of sorts the moment I get revived by a teammate. If you start moving 0.5 seconds before you're revived, you suddenly get a weird speed boost and if you partner it with a roll, you get a massive boost in speed allowing you to dodge out the way just in case if say your teammate revived you in a dangerous place or in the middle of a fight or something. Now moving on to tip number six. Now this one's going to be much much shorter since it's not really going to be talking about anything major. It's just going to be talking about a thing that people usually misunderstand sometimes, which is the slippery ice and the swampy slash um, shallow water that you can step in. Now obviously that you can nullify the effect by wearing claw boot upgrades but again many people don't actually wear those since there's many other upgrades to wear and have which would be more effective but again it's always best to avoid swampy waters and slippery ice just in case of any issues. Now moving on to tip number seven, we're going to be talking about passable walls. Now, passable walls, when I mean passable, I don't mean you can physically go through them, I mean your bullets can. So there's one in security and I think there's um, two of them in um, research. I don't know where about whereabouts else they could be, I think there's like a few other examples of them, but the only ones I can really find and think of at the top of my head is the ones there. Um, at the locations I've listed. Um, now you can shoot through them, you can't walk through them, but you can't uh, throw foibles through them. So you can use them as a, a way to gain an advantage over another player, whether it's you know trapping them in a room and shooting them through there, or maybe just shooting them whilst they're out in the open, something like that. Now, tip number eight is going to be very short since, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. Now, it's always best to remember where you're going. Now, a lot of new players always forget to check the map to see where the, you know, the circle is going to be or where the next zone is going to be so they can move there. Um, a lot of the players also don't pre 
you know choose the location go they're going to be going so say if they're before the game starts opening your map to see where the bird goes so you can you know pick the location you want this always is you know best for team based game modes as well so you can choose a location so all your team knows where you're going and it allows you to have a good communication in the team and it's always best to have that so that you're always not lost or you know don't know where you're going Now moving on to tip number 9, resources, something that is key within a battle royale. Now the best way to get resources back inside of SAR is to break grass, wheat, boxes, vases, anything that breaks could potentially drop you items to use, minus you know explosive barrels. Um, now I think boxes, if I'm remembering from the top of my head, boxes can give you um, tape, it can give you throwables, minus bananas and it can give you ammo. Now. Grass and like wheat and stuff can give you juice, bananas and ammo so it's always best to remember which one or which um, you know one can give you which item and it's always best to use claw um, the claw boots because they give you an added boost of the things you actually can get collect from grass. Now on to tip number 10, on to something that people generally didn't know which is using the dart gun on your teammates to heal them. A lot of people don't know this, especially new players, especially AI, but AO, it's something that can be considered. Now moving on to tip number 11, we're going to be on about stealth. Now, sound can be heard from anywhere around the game and it's always best to make it as less as possible. Now the best way to do this is whilst taping and juicing, you crouch whilst walking and that allows you to have this sense of more quietness when moving around. Now the juicing and taping is still heard but it's still something. Now moving on to tip number 12, we're going to be talking about speed and mobility. Now in Super Animal Royale, speed and mobility is key, so the best way to actually keep it consistent is to hold, hold out your harvesting tool. And for that reason is that there's certain guns that if you hold can greatly decrease your mobility, such as the sniper rifle and the minigun. So it's always best to keep in mind which guns can make you slow and which ones can make you fast. Now moving on to tip number 13, we're going to be talking about our emu friends once again. But this time I'm going to be talking about how they can actually not slip over bananas. Lots of players actually don't know this and it's always key since there could be times where there's a banana barricade and you want to get through maybe a blocked off area, you can always use an emu to get through it. Now keep in mind emus cannot eat bananas, I forgot to mention that in another tip but just keep that in mind so that you don't try and peck the bananas either. Now moving on to tip number 14, we're going to be talking about bananas. Now, bananas can slip up teammates. Again, lots of people don't know this and think that you can just walk over your teammates' bananas like it's nothing, but sadly that isn't the case. You can slip over your enemy's bananas and you can slip up your own teammates' bananas. So keep that in mind next time when you're in the battlefield to always be mindful about your friend's bananas. Now moving on to tip number 15, we're going to be talking about bananas once again, but this time we're going to be talking about how they can get destroyed. Now on screen you should be seeing me using a BCG, they can get destroyed via that way. They can also get destroyed via the use of a hamster ball, and then they can also get destroyed via the use of explosives, whether that is a grenade or a explosive barrel. Always keep this in mind, say if there's a reason why you're trapped inside of a room for some reason, just keep in mind that there is ways to destroy bananas without the use of a banana forker, and it's always best to keep that in mind just in case you want to get out of that situation. Moving on to tip number 16, we're going to be talking about skunk gases or skunk bombs. Now, your teammate skunk bombs actually can't hurt you. Many people actually don't realise this at first, but again, it is something to keep in mind since you can always use this and partner it with the skunk snorkel to get an added speed boost, whether in a battle or a fight. Now moving on to tip number 17, we're going to be talking about out drinking your opponent in the final circle. Now we've probably all been in that situation and the best upgrade to use for this is a cup grade as it allows you to drink more juice and gain more HP into your system more quickly. Now keep this in mind, 
sometimes this won't work since there'll be times where a person has uh, you know higher HP than you so you're already at a disadvantage but just keep in mind that a cook grade is the best upgrade for that situation Now moving on to tip number 18, we're going to be going back to our friends, which are the emus. Now emus can have a quick speed duration when your passenger spanks them. Now spanking them, I think is just literally pressing the shoot button on any kind of platform. And there is a cooldown that appears underneath your HP with every spank. And it's always best to keep this in mind just in case you want that added speed bonus to get you and your teammate out of a situation or away an enemy that is just wanting to kill you. Now onto tip number 19, we're going to be talking about the bow. Now with the bow, it can be very dangerous in the right hands and if you practice enough with it, you can easily outplay your opponents with it. You can easily run around them and hit them up with the bow, allowing you to easily get pop shots on them, eventually killing them and fight winning the fight. Now bows, they can do damage to both the HP and the armor, which is also very dangerous to begin with. So it's always best to use the bow and practice with it so you can eventually win fights with it. Now moving on to tip number 20, we're going to be talking about the BCG. Now always make sure to be wary of the BCG when with teammates and trying to revive them, as it can always end very badly. The BCG can hit many opponents and can actually be very detrimental in a fight. So if you ever see a person using a BCG, make sure to take them out before reviving your teammate. Now moving on to tip 21, this tip is actually something that people actually not doesn't really actually look into, is the clams that you can find on the beaches. Now clams, they can actually give you quite a bit of stuff. They can give you up to three types of ammo at a time. They can give you, I think, three stunt gun grenades, two grenades, they can give you three tape. It's just really overpowered. And if you ever have the chance to double check the beach, always make sure to double check it since there's always chances you can find clams there to get some loot that you can bring with you to the central island into other fights. Moving on to tip number 22, this is going to be a short one, but you can actually ride on enemy emus to neglect the pecking. Though be aware that most enemies are willing to kill their emu to potentially kill you. Moving on to tip 23, be aware that when you're using the claw boots to break grass or breaking grass normally with your harvesting tool, it can be seen outside of the visual distance. So in shadows and stuff, you can see that the grass is being destroyed. This could potentially be an enemy spying on you. So be aware that enemies can see when grass is broken. Now moving on to tip 24, the best offensive and defensive gun in Super Mario Royale duos and squads has to be the dart gun or the new dart fly gun, as it allows you to both heal your teammates and also injure enemies. Now I'm going to show a few clips on the screen right now of me using the dart gun in a custom game against bots. Now again this is against bots but it's still showing you the, you know, the complications and things you could implement with the dart gun to be able to heal your teammate and also injure enemies. Now moving on to tip number 25, we are going to be talking about balls or hamster balls. Now if you ever want to attack an enemy with a hamster ball and potentially kill them, always attack them from the top or bottom, not the left and right, as players can see much further left and right and can see you coming from a mile away. There we go, that is all 25 tips. Now I'm going to give you guys one more. Now if you didn't know, the more you get downed and revived, the quicker you can bleed out in potential downs in the future. Now Phantom here, my friend, is going to be taking various amounts of downs and you can see that his HP is actually taking more and more damage the you know the more times he gets downed keep this in mind just in case you keep getting downed throughout a single game do know that if you keep on doing so then you will potentially run into problems where you will probably die more quickly 
Now, I hope you did enjoy this video. As much as it was very irritating to get all these little tips for you guys to, you know, put them all in one video, it was really fun to actually come together with the community and a few friends and to be able to get enough uh, tips for you guys to put it into a big video. So I hope you guys did enjoy and I hope one of these tips helped you. If you want to put comment down which tip was the most useless and which one was the most useful, I wouldn't mind you guys doing so. But anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video though and that you're having a great day. Stay safe and I'll see you guys later. Bye bye.